Welcome to the Nevis Newscast. Today is Wednesday, 6th December 2017. I'm Fredicia Liburd. Nevis is gearing up for local elections, which is scheduled to take place on Monday, 18th December 2017. In light of this, nomination day will be held on Monday, 11th December, and Supervisor of Elections, Elvin Bailey, has stated that everything is in place to allow for the smooth flow of activities on nomination day as well as election day. Bailey said returning officers have already been appointed at the following districts. District 1, Mr. Kevin Barrett. District 2, Mr. Rohan Claxton. District 3, Mrs. Vinetta Hobson Movin. District 4, Mrs. Ermelita Elliott. And District 5, Mrs. Sherilla Nisbet. We are confident that this combination of new and experienced officers, having had the necessary training, will execute their duties professionally. They will be at the nomination sites from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. to receive nominations. Bailey made a statement with regards to persons who may have misplaced their identification card or have expired IDs. Persons whose national identification cards have expired, persons who have misplaced or lost their cards once properly registered will be allowed to vote upon presentation of any other form of government-issued picture identification. The supervisor also asked the public to pay attention to the electoral offences. I appeal to the public to pay attention to the electoral offences, all of which carry prison terms and fines. These two will be published in the newspapers. I invite the public to join all electoral workers to ensure that the elections are peaceful and that each person gets one vote in the right place. All eligible voters duly registered are urged to exercise their franchise by voting on December 18th. If you are not properly registered, do not attempt to vote and do not impersonate a voter. Employers are reminded that employees should, by law, be allowed time to carry out their constitutional right to vote. According to the supervisor, after exclusions of names from the register due to deaths and objections, there are 11,303 registered voters, 2,025 in District 1, 3,910 in District 2, 1,650 in District 3, 2,338 in District 4, and 1,380 in District 5. This represents an approximate 12% increase since the 2013 elections. The official ceremony to launch the 20K project Hurricane Relief for Farmers was held earlier today at the Department of Agriculture's Experimental Station at Prospect. Farmers on Nevis are the proud recipients of 80,000 seedlings. The project was inspired by the recent passage of Hurricanes Irma and Maria, as stated by Director at the Ministry of Agriculture, Randy Elliott. He pointed out the purpose of the project is to ensure food security on the island and reduce dependence on outside supplies as the island experienced a shortage of produce on the shelves of the supermarkets. Our team here at the department, Peter, Leroy Brown, Marvin Lewis, Kwame. We have started work in terms of ensuring that greenhouses are prepared. So after this ceremony, we'll see some of the houses that we would have already did work on to ensure that food is back on the island. Over a four-month period, the agriculture sector will welcome 20,000 seedlings of different crops, which will be distributed to farmers. These seedlings include crops of tomatoes, lettuce, sweet peppers, cabbage, melons, honeydew, cantaloupe, squash, and cucumbers. Bags of fertilizers and poultry feed will also be distributed to assist with bountiful yields. Regional Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, AICA representative John King, informed that although AICA is not a funding agency, through talks with Augustine Merchant, the goal was realized and the partnership was formed securing EC $100,000 in assistance. We from AICA started to discuss with headquarters to see 
how we can support the countries in their um, rehabilitation efforts. You know that ICA is not a funding agency. We are a technical cooperation agency. So if we're looking at when countries are uh, uh, hit by hurricanes or whatever flood or whatever natural disaster, we are going in a mode of rehabilitation and not relief. In discussing with um, headquarters, we trying to allocate funds, get funds from headquarters, and it was, we had to be very creative, right? To, and of course with a little pressure, right? To get headquarters to allocate some funds for St. Kitts and Nevis. We were able to find approximately 100,000 uh, easy dollars to assist farmers in St. Kitts and Nevis. Minister with responsibility for agriculture, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, urged the local farmers to plant and yield as markets are available. The director would have mentioned a cost of $50,000 and that we may, be, um, we may have to forego that in the Ministry and Department of Agriculture. But I want to say this, sometimes you have to lose to gain. We would lose some money, yes, but the, 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 the bottom line is we will gain in that our farmers will be better off. Our farmers will be able to put those seedlings to good use in terms of uh, farming and harvesting the products. And I want to say to you as well, our farmers, that there are markets opening up all around us. I speak of Park Hyatt, for example. In addition to the seedlings, other farming materials were donated, such as fencing wire, beehives, drip lines, poultry feed, plastic film, wiggle wire, and profiles to repair 16 greenhouses, including one at the Charlestown Primary School. Still to come, NIA optimistic FRS renovations won't disrupt Nivision's employment prospects. The details when we return. My name is Greg Phillip. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Nevis Tourism Authority. Nevis Mango and Food Festival has been around for four years and in our view it is one of the most unique festivals anywhere, mainly because of what it does. You see, it celebrates the mango. We have over 40 different varieties of mangoes on Nevis, plus a very, very rich and good culinary scene and we've put those two things together. So once you dine at this Nevis Mango and Food Festival, believe me, you're dining on food that has never been created before because every single chef that cook at this festival have one excellent challenge. The challenge is everything you cook, every course of every meal must include mangoes from Nevis. Welcome back. 72 students from public schools in St. Kitts graduated from the Teen and Police Service TAPS Academy on Monday, 4th December 2017. The students were awarded certificates for successfully completing the 11-week course at a ceremony held at the Sir Cecil Jacobs Auditorium. To graduate, students had to attend sessions regularly and should have exhibited a change in behavior by the end of the program. Six students received special awards as the most improved participants and another six for being the most diligent. At present, the program is facilitated by three police officers, Constables Lawston Percival, Nikisha Thomas, and Mark Handley, who are assigned to two schools each. The TAPS Academy was reintroduced in schools this year and is a joint initiative between the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force, the Ministry of National Security, and the Ministry of Education. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education, the Honorable Sean Richards, said his ministry supported the reintroduction of the program in schools. He also expressed that they were pleased with and excited about the work the police were doing in all secondary schools. Minister Richards described the academy as a youth empowerment program. 
The Nevis Island Administration, NIA, is optimistic that renovation work on the island's flagship hotel, the Four Seasons Resort Nevis, will not disrupt employment prospects for the island's people. The revelation came from Honorable Mark Brantley, Deputy Premier for Nevis and Minister with, with Responsibility for Tourism, while updating stakeholders on the projections for the 2017-2018 tourism season at a meeting hosted by the Nevis Division of the St. Kitts and Nevis Chamber of Industry and Commerce at Yatsman Grill on November 30th. We as a government were quite concerned about any closure because of course a closure would bring with it uh, difficulties in terms of employment. I can say that this was one of the main issues in the our negotiations and discussions with the purchasers and the new owners and they have given every assurance that there will be no closure. And what they will do is to build around and that is why the construction has taken as long as it, it has taken. They started with beach replenishment and refurbishment. They have now, I believe, uh, nearly finished with the construction of their pier, which they've extended outwards and have put a T uh, onto the end. They have also created with this pier, I'm told, a new area for entertainment and dining that they're going to use uh, out there for events. They've also built some low walls by the rooms because as you know, uh, that hotel was built in a curious place and has had difficulties with flooding over the years. Minister Brantley noted that based on information received, the rooms upgrade will not commence until April of 2018. And I'm told that the upgrade of the rooms, and I don't know how many of you might have visited, they actually do have a model room already completed, but the upgrade of the rooms will be done in sections starting around about April of next year. The reason for that is, I'm told, that they have pretty strong bookings up until then. And that will be the first period of time when the bookings slack off so they can then do the hotel in various sections. Renovation works at the hotel comes on the heels of its recent change in ownership. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Fredicia Leibert. Thank you for viewing.